The next book is, I'm gonna kill myself, is what the next book is. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Annabelle from Reading Geek and today I will be giving you my most anticipated summer releases. Let's get to it. Before I start, I think it is very important that we try to support these authors during this time because they are definitely not getting the publicity they would normally if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, especially our POC authors, you know, they don't get as much clout. <laughs> so please be sure to check out some of the books that I am about to share with you guys today. I feel like it is a pretty good variety. We have some rom-com, we have some thrillers, we have some coming of age novels, some fantasy. So I'm hoping that one of you or all of you will find at least one book here that you will find interesting and that you will purchase. The first book is Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Frazier. It follows an 18 year old pregnant pizza girl who is at a loss in life. She's still trying to figure out her future and on top of that, she is grieving the loss of her father. She then becomes obsessed with one of her customers. This customer being Jenny, a stay at home mother who orders a pickle pizza, hence the slice of pickle pizza on this book cover every week to keep her son happy. This cover is what actually drew me to this book. It's so retro and cool looking. Like I just need to own it and I need to take beautiful pictures with it. But besides that, this story seems really cool. I feel like it's something that I would really enjoy. A coming of age novel in which we have two women at different places in their life coming together and maybe finding, finding solace in each other and a friendship in each other or not, maybe the pizza girl is really crazy obsessed with this middle-aged woman and there's conflict between them, but we'll see when we read it. And Pizza Girl comes out June 9th. I have the window closed and the AC off because it is the next book is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is book two in the Brown Sisters series. This follows Danny, a career-driven, sexually awakened woman who does not believe in love, but she does believe in the occasional role in the hay, in the occasional one night stand. So when she's given the opportunity to start a friends with benefits relationship with the hot security guard, Zephyr, heck yes, she wants to take that. How does this happen? Zephyr ends up saving her from a fire drill mishap at her job and this goes viral on the internet. So the internet is shipping Zafir and Danny and Zafir having a sports charity for children sees this as good for publicity. So he asks her to fake a relationship with him and she sees this as an in to possibly get in his pants. However, Zafir is a bit of a Bitch, can you speak? However, Zephyr is a bit of a romantic. So let's see if he can change her mind about romance. Okay, I absolutely loved book one, uh, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. It was one of my favorite books in 2019. The chemistry between Chloe and Red was impeccable. Banter, oh my God, Tally, Talia Hibbert knows banter. She does it so well. When you are cheesing while reading a book, smiling constantly like you can't help yourself you know that's a good romance you know that's a good romance so i am truly hoping that danny brown is just as good if not better than chloe brown that book comes out june 23rd 2020. damn that was going pretty well and i done fucked up the next book is actually my most anticipated read of 2020 as a whole because I absolutely love this author and it is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. First of all, look at that cover. Oh, it's such a beautiful cover. It reminds me of The Beautiful Ones, which is my favorite book by her. All right, let me actually tell you what this book is about. Given the title, Mexican Gothic, gothic. It is inspired by the classic gothic suspense novel. It follows Noemi, a young socialite in 1950s Mexico. Upon receiving a distressing letter from her cousin saying that her husband is trying to poison her, Noemi decides to go over to High Place, a super creepy mansion on top of a hill in the middle of nowhere in countryside Mexico. 
she is kind of wrapped up in this new horrific world that is high place. She starts having nightmares, bloody, creepy nightmares. Her cousin's husband is both alluring and menacing. And then his father is a creep. <laughs> That's what I got from that. He's creeping on Noemi. I don't know, he has some sort of interest in Noemi. And the only ally she finds in this castle is the youngest son who seems to want to help her, but is also hiding the secrets of this family. It seems to have a sinister past and she is trying to discover what it is. But will High Place trap her? Will she ever be able to leave High Place? Or will she be come part of this creepy haunted mansion. I don't know. I'm just really excited for this book. This book comes out June 30th. Y'all, please go support my girl, Silvia Moreno Garcia. If just to have this beautiful cover, like, buy the book. <laughs> buy the book. You know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I love Silvia Moreno Garcia and this book sounds so, so cool and I'm so excited to stay up all night reading it. That's all. <laughs> that is all. Can you tell this was my most anticipated read of the year? Because I'm excited. Charlie Crabtree. Say Charlie Crabtree five times, three times fast. Say Charlie Crabtree five times fast. Charlie Crabtree, Charlie Crabtree, Charlie Crabtree, Charlie Crabtree. Damn girl, you did a good job. The next book is The Shadows by Alex North. Everybody has known that peculiar teenager who always seemed capable of doing something truly sinister. Well, Charlie Crabtree, was that teenager? And he did do that sinister thing. That being murder. The gruesome murder that Crabtree committed has gained infamy in the darkest corners of the internet, inspiring multiple copycats. Yeah. Paul Adams knew all too well about this murder as I'm gonna kill myself in the way that Crabtree murdered this person. Like I am just... Paul Adams knew all too well about this murder as his friends were Charlie Crabtree and his victim. Years later, he is finally starting to move on with his life, but after his mother starts growing old and senile, it is time for him to return home. Here's the catch. Another copycat murder has resurfaced. On top of that, Paul's mother is in distress, believing that there is someone in their home, and he also can't shake the feeling that someone has been following him. What makes this even more disturbing is that Crabtree was never found. This person disappeared after he committed a gruesome murder. So is he back? I don't know, but I'm so excited to read this. I don't know if you have read The Whisper Man, also by Alex North. I believe it is his debut novel, but it was truly creepy in the most subtle way. And I feel like The Shadows is just going to amp that up. I'm excited for this one. This book comes out July 7th, 2020. Be sure to check it out and maybe we could read it together. I don't know. Let me know if you want to read that one down below. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Let's switch it up with something a little more lighthearted. The next book is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. So this is a rom-com set on the set of a telenovela sort of, which is really what got me, but also this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Have you noticed that I usually like picking up books because the covers are beautiful? Because yes, that happens often. First of all, that's William Levy. Telenovela heartthrob, William Levy. Do you know? If you don't, here he is. So this follows two telenovela stars, Jasmine and Ashton. They are both dealing with career destroying issues right now. Um, Jasmine has been part of a scandal and is plastered across all of the tabloids and Ashton was just written off of his telenovela. So what does that say about his career? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he thinks it's dying write somebody off unless they don't want them in the story. <laughs> they both end up being cast in a new bilingual rom-com that will be airing on a streaming service, think Jane the Virgin on Netflix. Being that they are both afraid for their careers, they decide to help each other out and practice their lines off screen. This ensues a off-screen romance on top of the on-screen one. <laughs> 
So I'm like really excited just because this is giving telenovela vibes and I really be trashing on telenovelas sometimes because they can be the most corny thing ever. They're basically um, American soap operas but 10 times better if you don't know what it is. Yes? Like you knew what I was doing. <sighs> what was I saying? Right, telenovelas are better than soap operas. Why? Because I don't know why corny things are said so much better in Spanish. In English, it sounds terrible. Maybe because Spanish is the love language and everything sounds beautiful in Spanish. <laughs> anyway, I'm super excited for this read to be getting this kind of a story in books <laughs> to be getting this kind of a story in a rom-com is absolutely amazing be sure to check this one out support alexis daria it comes out august 4th next book is luster by raven Lin i keep wanting to say Lene, and i don't know if you guys know who raven Lene is but she is an absolutely amazing r b singer go check her out i will put her name here you know what? i'm gonna link down some of her videos in the description below because her music is great but this is not raven Lene. this is raven leilani so luster by raven leilani follows eddie a young black struggling artist living in Bushwick and struggling through her 20s, trying to figure out her life, as well as working a dead-end job and not making the most smart choices when it comes to sexual relationships. <laughs> she ends up meeting a man, Eric. He is a digital archivist who is married and lives in New Jersey with his family. He is in an open marriage with his wife, and this marriage has some rules. I don't know what they are yet. Kind of excited to find out what they are. You know, I don't know. Eddie ends up losing her job and falling into Eric's family. She becomes hesitant friends with his wife. She becomes a sort of role model for their daughter. So this is just sounds like it's gonna be like an, a really interesting, like character driven story in which we see this girl kind of find her own in her 20s. Um, song recommendation, 20 something by SZA. For all of those 20 somethings, hello, I'm calling to you. This song is for you and maybe this book is for you. So be sure to check it out. That's Luster by Raven Leilani. It comes out August 4th, 2020. Most of these books are coming out August 4th, 2020. The next one is Lobby Sona by Romina Garber. It follows Manuela Azul, an undocumented immigrant living in Miami, Florida. She's living a seemingly small existence in a small apartment when that all changes. Her grandmother is attacked and her mother is detained by ICE. So she has absolutely nothing to lose now and decides to dig into her past and find out who she truly is. She is led to a world connected to her dead father and his criminal past. A world full of folklore in which every seventh daughter and every seventh son is either born a bruja or a lobison, a werewolf. So I have been finding that I really enjoy books that kind of delve into a country's folklore. I really loved Gods of Jade and Shadow, which is on Mayan folklore with fantasy, and also The Night Tiger by Yang Zi Chu, which delves into Malaysian folklore. And uh, I'm really here for the Argentinian folklore, you know, that's going to be coming from Lovisona. I'm just excited for this story. It seems so, so interesting. I get the feeling that... Um, our girl, giving the title being Lobisona, she is not born a bruja as all girls are supposed to be born, but a female werewolf. I'm really excited to read this. Be sure to check out Lobisona. The next book is Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Basterica. This is not a new release. It was originally published in 2017 in Argentina. It is a critically acclaimed best-selling in It is a critically acclaimed best-selling novel, but has been translated by, who was it translated by? By Sarah Moses, and that translation will be released August 4th. This is a dystopian novel in which animals have been wiped out and humans are harvested for 
food. Our main character, Marcos, works at one of these meat packing plants. He tries to go into work and not think about the fact that he is slaughtering humans. Yeah, I know this, this sounds absolutely crazy, but I really want to read this. And on top of that, he receives a gift one day, a special specimen that he keeps in his barn tied up. Yes, she is human. Now he starts treating her like a human being. And this starts this sort of questioning of what has gone wrong with the world, what we have done and what can possibly be saved. And this just feels like one of those books that's just gonna blow my freaking mind. So I need to read it. If you have the stomach for something like this, be sure to pick it up when it comes out on August 4th so we can talk about it. Last but not least, Midnight Sun by Stephanie Mayer. I really don't have to explain this. This is Twilight as told by Edward Culling. We're gonna be able to see the story behind the eyes of our sparkling vampire, Edward Cullen. Now, I have not read Twilight since I was like 14 years old, so I really don't know if I'm going to enjoy it this time around. I do plan on doing a reread as part of the Cullenathon. I will post the link down below to the Twitter account that is doing this readathon in case you want to join as well. Um, so that I can prepare for the release of Midnight Sun. I really think I owe it to my 13 year old self to do this and revisit this uh, because I know that Midnight Sun was supposed to come out a long time ago, but it was leaked. And now that it's coming out, I think I should read it. Is anybody else reading Midnight Sun? Anyways, that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found one of these summer releases interesting and that you decide to pick it up. Let me know which one of those you will be picking up down below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm posting and I'll see you guys next time. Oh my God, we did it. We did it. That was probably absolutely terrible, but we did it.